What's going on all you mentees? Unkenny Omar here from Near Mint Condition and welcome to my first haul of the year. So this is my haul for books in January of 2023. So let's go ahead and get started. And welcome back everybody. Now, before getting started, I want to give a huge thank you to our patrons for making videos like this possible. Could not be doing this without you all. And if you look in the description of our video, that's where the link to our Patreon is. And yeah, today is my haul for the month of January of 2023. There's a lot of books that I bought. Some were sent my way. So a big thank you to all you wonderful folks uh, like Kyle and Justin and James, people that just send me books, uh, whether it's for giveaways or whether it's uh, to keep, uh, to add to my library. Big thank you to you all. Uh, so we do have a variety of books. Some of these books I've already gone over, like that DC Metals, but I'll just remind you, and I'll put a link above where you can find that original video. I guess, not original, but my version of it. Uh, my take on it, rather. All right, so before going any further, smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. Let's go. All right, so a couple of books that I got from one of my viewers. I can never remember who is okay with me mentioning their name. So playing it safe outside of some of the folks that I've already named. A uh, big thank you. This is Plox. Hell is other players. We have volumes one and two, and these are done in these little dimensions. I like these. Like I always think of like Golden Age or the little golden books uh, when I look at these. And this one here is signed by Steve Hammer. 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 Maker. Why am I having such a hard time uh, with that? This is all in English, and it's an original graphic novel. And this one, I believe, is, uh, you can purchase it at plockscomic.com. It was a webcomic at first. I haven't had a chance to, to re actually, most of the stuff here, with the exception of a couple of books that I've already done overviews of, and some that I'll talk about when I go over them, I haven't had a chance to read yet. They are put in my pile to read. This is volume two, Don't Play Games. Again, you can purchase it from plockscomic.com. And in color... And I believe, like I said, these are printed versions of web comics. So it doesn't really tell you what it's about. And I kind of like that. You know, I don't, I, I go into game. I really like these covers. So like, check these out. They're like little emojis. Hey, but that's the world we live in. Oh, for my friend, Eric Florida, he was my godfather of geek. I miss you, pal. It's beautiful. And Steve Hamaker both the writer and artist on this book both of these right here and these are both hardcover with art on board next up is transformers generation 2 dark designs now somewhere in the move i misplaced my copy uh, this was available in trade paperback and in hardcover and i will say if you're trying to collect these before i even do the reading order the hardcovers are always harder to find and a lot more expensive than the trade paperbacks the trade paperbacks are out of print, but at least they're a little bit easier to find. So there's a forward there by Furman, and then we talk about Generation 2 right here. Uh, so what this collects right here, this by the way is Dark Designs, is the first six issues of Transformers Generation 2, is what we called it. However, uh, here, let me go back to the beginning here. I believe they were under the Transformers UK 3 through 5, but here are the covers. I love that cover. You may have seen that in my previous hauls or in the background. I have that one signed by Simon Furman. I just think it's such an awesome cover. These aren't your brother's Transformers. All the way in the back are the, yeah, 4, 5, and then 6. So, I'm sorry, it's 4, 5, and 6. And then Rage in Heaven is the second volume. Uh, but I will be doing a a part two of the Transformers reading order, and I was like, oh, I kind of need that. Yeah, so not sure what happened to my copy. I'm sure it'll turn up sometime yeah, whenever I don't need it, but since I'm doing a reading order, got to do it. Now, J.V. Tanhuatko sent me his book. This is Third World Power. It's his own published work. He is the writer with him, Jimenez, doing the artwork. I did want to showcase it. This is a small digest-sized book about a kid that has superpowers kind of think of like uh the experiments that were done on the kids on akira 
but it's a really powerful read. Uh, he sent it to me all the way uh, from overseas, so thank you so much. Along with this comic right here, Mythopolis, uh, number three. And this is a single issue right here, and this one has mature content on there. So another book that he sent my way was Stay. This is one I believe that he edited, if I'm not mistaken. And here's your artist all through here, him, Jimenez, the gentleman that worked with him on that third world power is also one of the artists here. This is an anthology of stories, and it's all written by Angelo R. La Cuesta. Now, this does have a mature content on it, and I haven't had a chance to read this one, but... I don't know if that's due to violence or things like sexual content, but it does have a mature rating on it as I'm flipping through here and just taking a chance. And all of this done in black and white. Woo! Dodge that bullet. Uh, there is sexual content in here, by the way. I had to edit something out. Now, if you live around in Ollie's, Ollie's is having a lot of books come in from DC and some Marvel, but a lot of DC liquidation prices. So my buddy James sent me a message saying, hey... By the way, um, I know you're missing this, and I pick it up for you, and of course I paid him back, but thank you so much, James, seriously. This is Wonder Woman, War of the Gods Omnibus. It's not Wonder Woman uh, by George Paytas, but it is. I mean, it, it is George Paytas' Wonder Woman. He wrote it, and he drew War of the Gods, but this is the event and all the tie-ins. Uh, so it in does include issues of Wonder Woman. By the way, this is Phil Jimenez's earliest artwork, like helping out George Paytas, especially in issues of War of the Gods. This sets up what War of the Gods is. The stuff in here that's collected in the third omnibus, so there's some double dipping, are the actual War of the God issues and the Wonder Woman issues. But everything is in here, like Aquaman and Hawk and Dove um, and Dr. Fate. Oh my gosh, we need a Dr. Fate omnibus. Um, that stuff is not in that omnibus. So just rest assured, if you have it, you're going to be double dipping about... I want to say seven issues or eight issues at most. And then the rest of the stuff has never seen print. So this is an event Omni. So thinks something like Ben Omnibus by Donny Cates is kind of like your Wonder Woman by George Paytas Omnibus. And this is more like King in Black by Donny Cates with all the tie-ins. I can't believe I made that comparison, but that's the best way to compare it for new Omni collectors. So this stuff has been liquidated, meaning that once it's out of stock, or out of print, rather, at the distribution level. That's it. So that's what usually happens. And then two years from now, people will be like, hey, when is this going to get reprinted? And that is the way this usually works. This is a really fun crossover. And there are ups and downs with the tie-ins. I'm not going to lie. Some are better than others. But that is Wonder Woman, War of the Gods, Omnibus. Now, James also sent me Two Fist of Tells. This is Volume 3. And this is one that I was missing from the EC Archives. So the EC archives were originally published, they were uh, hardcovers, originally published by Gemstone Publishing, and then Dark Horse took over. And when Dark Horse took over, they pretty much took over the printing, or the publishing rather, of the books. It's still the same creative teams that help put it together, do the color on it, because it does have this modernization on the color. But it's not to the extent of something like Swamp Thing by Alan Moore, where they've just reimagined the color. This is more of going back and taking the co original colors and modernizing them. So think something along the uh, along the lines of the Thor by Walter Simonson omnibus, where they're modernizing the colors and staying true to the, the closest they can with these modern colors. I know there's a lot of people that hate these. I happen to love them because they're in color. The other option for me would have been to get those gemstone box sets that have these stories, but they're collected in black and white. I mean, one day we might find a publisher that actually publishes these and gives us the original colors, but until then, this is it. And I've never read any of the stories in here. This is two uh, Fist of Tales, and there is an introduction by Grant Gaisman right there, and then the foreword by Joe Kubert. Oh, man. Joe is a big fan of war books he himself sergeant rock baby all right but this does come with a dust jacket just like all the other ec archives indigo edges now this is not a comic book but it is by rob m arbelay and he is one of my wonderful viewers this is his first book that he had published that is a freaking feat to get accomplished and he wrote me this amazing letter talking about how dark 
the years 2020 to 2022 have been and how the channel really helped him through things and man though <laughs> those kind of comments and letters just mean so much to me so this is indigo edges it is like i said a book no pictures uh but hey i'm married to an english teacher so we still have to have a lot of those around and this is all set in the year 2236 and by my buddy rob m arbelay next up are the three year one deluxe editions these are so amazing um, I believe the Nightwing and the Batgirl are out of print. I thought Robin was still in print, but as of this video, I don't know. They're just beautiful books. I love the design on these because they have this, they or they share the same spine design. So these will all go together. And I have these books already collected. Like I have the complete collection of both Batgirl and Robin year one. Nightwing, I have in trade paperback. But I needed these. These are beautiful deluxe editions, meaning that they're oversized hardcovers. They each come with a dust jacket, unlike the long Halloween stories. So that really surprises me. And if you want me to do an, more of an in-depth overview of these, I'd be more than happy to. Because people sometimes ask me to do more of an in-depth overview of books. And I do not mind at all. But the only thing that sucks is that they're out of print. So doing those, I guess I could do a retro view. So yes, these are all the stories by Chuck Dixon and Scott Beatty helping him along the way. And you have Marcos Martin working on freaking Batgirl. Javier Pulido working on Robin. And then of course, Scott McDaniel reuniting with Chuck Dixon to tell the story of Nightwing year one and how he became Nightwing. I'm always interested to see when people read these stories because they're called year one. And I think we're all taught to think think hey this is the beginning this is where you start but with nightwing is a little bit different nightwing is more like present time and then a flashback it's not like batman year one by frank miller and david um, mezzichelli but this is what the artwork looks like in batgirl all three of these are freaking awesome and i hope one day maybe we might get an omnibus of this one day with the new dc era who knows and I've done an overview of the Dark Knights Metal. I've done an overview of the Dark Knights Absolute Edition, if you want to check that out. I know we have a Death Metal Omnibus, or I'm sorry, Absolute Edition coming out. No word on an Omnibus yet, but hopefully we'll get one. And I'll leave a link in the description of the video uh, for you to go and watch that overview in case you haven't seen it. But that is the Dark Knights Metal. Again... And then again, just some free comic books like the free comic book day here, Godzilla, and then Trackman. Oh, this is from overseas, so I have to open this up. Let's see, is this, I don't know if this is in English. I don't think it's in English, but let's see here. Sometimes, uh, you wonderful folks, nope, not in English, but this is what comics across the sea look like. You know, this is how I learned to read English, so I don't have a problem looking at the pictures and learning some words. It's very cool. I like the cover, actually. The feel of it. It's like a hard, soft cover. I know there's a term for it. Trackman. From 2023. Uh, so this must have been published in 2022. The Closet. This is one of those image books that I've been wanting to check out. This is by James Tynion IV. Tiny Onion. And Drawn Bad. That is Creepy by Gavin Fullerton. Now, my buddy... See? Tiny Onion. Justin has already read this. He hasn't said what he thought about it, but I'm I'm interested to read it. That that cover, I like. It's like Steven Spielberg. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Steven Spielberg. Yeah, he loves. It's like Stephen King freaking the crap out of you with little kids. That's what that cover reminds me of. I assume this is. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is gonna be horror. All right, I'm in. That's all I needed to see. Uh, but for anyone else wanting to see what the artwork looks like, this is what the artwork looks like. And let's see what it's rated. It is horror. Okay. And it is mature. So keep that in mind. And the artwork, again, is by Gavin Fullerton. We have Dick Tracy, book number nine, part of the Blackthorn Publishing. This looks... Oh, yeah. This is old. 1986. My gosh. These are printed in black and white. So I have not collected any of the Dick Tracy comic strips. I know there are people that follow my channel that love those comic strips, but I have not had a chance 
to actually go back and get them. And I know some of them are out of print. So this is a Ruben Award winner series. Chester Gould right there. But if you collect them, let me know. And then let me know if this was part of that or if this is something else. All right, Torso Bear. I had to open the first one to make sure this isn't weird or anything, but this is all in English. Uh, Source Point Press is the one that uh, published this book. And it does feel like it's got some mature themes in there, but it's got the uh, stuffed animals. It, it feels a little bit like Roger Rabbit, and that was just me actually reading the first few pages. Um, not sure if it goes into mature territory or not, as I have not read it. Nor have I opened up volumes two or three. This is Yarns from Toyberg. Volume two is all stitched up. And then this is back on the blocks. And that is Torso Bear. Let's look at the back here. So these were all kickstarted, I believe. And this is from, like I said, Source Point Press. And... I want to say that this, I remember the first volume, it might have been actually solicited officially. A fluffly Noir Anthology by Brett Uren and Glenn Moan. Script and art by Brett Uren. Okay, that might actually have to read that one. I might move up to the top of the pile. The Kyle Pile. Oh my gosh, this is so freaking unexpected and so cool. So Kyle got me Tetmujin. And he also got me the Kickstarter stuff. So for those of you that don't know, Magnetic Press puts out these beautiful books. And they do a huge Kickstarter for most of their books, I want to say. There's limited like edition prints in there, book, uh, bookmarks, and coin. Co there's a coin! Um, sometimes there's... Let's see here. These are actual prints. Let's open the... Whoa! These are some of the prints that came with... That is freaking beautiful. Oh my gosh! That's something I could frame. Not that I couldn't frame any of those, but that's just... Melanie and I love la landscapes like this. And then you have some more prints, but this time around you do have the title there and then the creator, Antoine Ozanam and Antoine Carrion. Very cool. Okay, we got to look in there. This is the Limited Journeyman Edition. Dude, Kyle, this is so freaking awesome, dude. Is that a coaster? They come with the wackiest things sometimes, these, these big Kickstarters. This is like a bag. There goes my dog. Gotta make sure I can show the bag. There's a book that Kyle got me I don't think I'm gonna be able to show much of, and I'll show you what I mean here in a second by actually covering some of the things up. That's more for me, though. Uh, okay, so this is Tetmujin. And it's, uh, it is available from... Oh, there's that print from Magnetic Press. So this is part one, The Beautiful Death. And oh my gosh, they put out a lot of beautiful stories. And most of them translated from the original French or Spanish or Italian. However, it comes from overseas. Make sure I can show this stuff. And I can't skip too much. Eh. And I can't skip too much because I have not read this. I will say there's a lot of nudity in this one. Just kind of because I'm skipping through here and editing, so mature content just in case. And violence! Oh my gosh. And you can always tell that it's a magnetic press book by these rounded edges. I love that they do that. They really do stand out. And I don't, I, I believe this is the limited edition Kickstarter version. I don't think the standard edition comes with this type of cover that you see here. And, huh, that is beautiful. I love that cover. Now, if you're interested in purchasing some of these books, don't forget to check out our sponsor. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! Here's Acts of Contrition. And I'm not sure where this one is from. I believe this one's from overseas. So it is in English, though. All in black and white, with the exception of some of the narration boxes. Freedom Fighter, Facebook, 
Beat it. Freedom Fighter Comics. Okay. Cool. Looks like a crime noir type of story. What the artwork looks like. Again, all in black and white with the exception of some few narration boxes and sound effects. So. And this one is in English. And again, that is Acts of Contrition. All right, back to the cow pile. The Omens. This is by Shane Moore. And it's all about this girl. This is one that I actually started reading. It is published in this black and white with some tones in there. But what I was going to say, it's all about this girl named Maggie Goodwin, who's your teenager. And just she hears voices in her head. And then she's able to move things. Telekinesis, right? With... Yeah, yeah. We, we've seen this before, X-Men. But what happens, though, is that she ends up seeing these mysterious figures at night. And she thinks it's all a nightmare or part of her dream. And there's a lot to it more than that. So the, she starts psyching herself into thinking that this is all part of just some kind of nightmare. Or maybe she is just having a weird overactive imagination. Now, this was a Kickstarter exclusive, but it's now available from Electromagnetic Press for $25 plus shipping. So, big thank you to Kyle for sending this my way. This one was really fun. Yeah, like I said, it's a mix of X-Men and then a little bit of some mystery stuff in there. And I'll put the link in the description of the video where you can pick this up yourself. But this is a trade paperback, and it is The Omens by Larry Morgan is the writer, by the way. I'm sorry. And Shane Moore is the artist inside the book and on the cover next up is the few and the curse by felipe cagno and fabiano neves and this one's published by clover press and it's got some red gilded edge pages very nice kind of like what sin city did this is a hardcover it is a standard size hardcover and it does have art on board no uh, what's it called? No dust jacket on this one. This is another one that Kyle sent my way. And the artwork, my gosh, the artwork in this is gorgeous. I've, I almost had him confused with uh, Rubio Neves' art. So I'm don't, not really sure if I'm familiar with Fabio Neves or not. I don't think it's the same person. It looks like a similar style, though. But I'm not familiar with Felipe Cagno either. I don't know what they've written or drawn together. But published by... Uh, Clover Press. And there is a soft cover. Looks like the hardcover cover is by Kim Yong Yong. And then Fabio Neves supplies the soft cover cover. Let's look in the back. Add some extras here. There we go. This is stuff I have not read, so I just have to flip around here a little bit. I have never heard of Kyle sends me stuff that sometimes ends up in my. So this might have been a Kickstarter version. Hmm. That ends up in my hidden gems. Like, he has just discovered so many books out there, and if he enjoys something, he'll send something my way. And sometimes he'll send two or three copies for my giveaways. He's such a kind dude. This is The Edge by Marvin Wynn, and it is published by TheEdgeComic.com. This is about a, this enhancement drug that gives you powers. And this is pretty much the story of what ends up happening and how it escalates when you take this drug and how pretty much the more you fight the more battles will come to you so this particular trade paperback covers issues one through four and the special edition covers are all found here i think these were originally published in single issues it looked like a web comic at first but seeing here let's look at the back nope just one cover i think the covers are in between i haven't had a chance to read anything past the first issue but I think just judging by the fact that it collects issues one through four, then this is probably in single issue available. And it is a Kickstarter exclusive, but you can purchase it from the edgecomic.com. Again, I'll leave a link in the description of the video so you can check out where you can publish or where you can buy this in case you're interested in the artwork and the story. And the edge comes with all these little extra goodies too. Let's get this together like this print right there gorgeous making sure it's one-sided and then this is chess the edge phantoms never heard of this series by the way and these little post-it card or postcards i don't know why i said post-it cards little stickers 
Ah, chibi stickers. That's cute. Oh, my kids are going to love those. The Klaatu Anthology. This is volume four by Raid Press. Holy crap. This thing is nuts. It, it starts off like a jungle book kind of story. And it's just an anthology of different creators. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, so Kyle, when I read this, or <laughs> whenever I started reading this, I was like, okay, I, I don't want to read anymore. The creators in here are nuts, and I want more. So this right now is only available through their rapid uh, raid press, sorry, uh, .com. It is $24.99, and the first three volumes are available for purchase. And he was like, oh, dude, I'll send you the first three volumes because he really enjoyed them. This is the fourth volume of these short stories. And the artwork is just by a multitude of artists and storytellers. Oh my gosh. So the crazy thing is, I thought it was just my copy, that when I got to about half of this book, of this creator series, the book takes a flip. And I thought, oh, that sucks. But then you have the side B creator, like this. So it's almost like a vinyl record. They have the French flaps there. This is a really cool book. Uh, this one does have some mature uh, mature themes in here, though. And there's an array of just different creators. And I love anthology series like this. And I'm so glad he brought this to my attention because now I want more. I will say the only thing about this is the actual cover itself. Oh, sorry. I forgot I had this upside down. The actual covers themselves are really, really thin. Like, I was expecting maybe a little bit thickness. It doesn't even feel like a magazine. It kind of feels like a flimsy uh, comic book cover, honestly. But they are beautiful books. Here's what the spine looks like. And I'll put a link in the description of the video where you can pick this up. Oh, by the way, the the raid came with all these little extras. And the raid comes with all these little extras. I'm not sure what's in here. Let's find out together. This is how much of a monster I am. And the raid comes with all these extras. This is how much of a monster I am. Just peel away. And I don't know why I didn't get a knife to keep this intact. But it's on the inside that counts, right? What's on the inside that counts, maybe? I don't know. So this looks to be a trading card. It's a ma oh, magnet! And a thank you from the raid team. It also has this big poster here. It looks like it's... A multi-fold-out poster. We'll keep that intact for right now. But I love the take on the Marvel trading cards. Marvel Universe, what was it? Series 2, I think, is what this looks like. The Simpsons. I had no idea about this book. You might have seen my review of the Treehouse of Horror omnibus. But this is the Crossover Crisis. So comes with a die-cut slipcase. That is freaking awesome. And it is published by Abram Comics Art. So this particular book retails for $24.99. And here's your chapters. Uh, there's an introduction by Matt Groening right there. So crossing over with Futurama is what this is. So it's the crossovers with Futurama and The Simpsons. And there's a little first issue collector's item right here of the Simpsons comic with their take on the Fantastic Four. These are beautiful collections for that price, honestly. And the fact that they have a die cut slip case, oh my gosh, it makes it so much better. Oversized artwork, this is beautiful. To kind of give you an idea, here is a standard size trade paperback and then you can see the trim size of these oversized hardcovers. It's the size of the Treehouse of Horror Omnibus that we did an overview on the channel. So that is Simpsons Futurama Crossover Crisis. I don't know if, you know, if Marvel's ever going to collect Simpsons or Futurama now that they have the Fox acquisition, but it would be cool to see all those old stories collect the Bongo stuff collected in big omnibus format. Now, to take a break from the cow pile, I've done an overview of the Invincible Compendium Volume 1. No word of a Compendium Volume 2 yet. And there is a companion compendium featuring the stories that were not included in Invincible. Like the side characters in their miniseries or some of the ongoing series that were taking place at the same time as Invincible. Alright, we have the Ignis Quadrant by Evan Carothers. And this is all the story of a man who's afraid to let go of his past while 
unknowingly searching for a purpose. Hey, it reminds me of uh, a Rick Remender book. Without the trope of something being broken with the man. Maybe that's what letting go of the past will be. And the worlds and characters are drawn from a plethora of influencing sources from science fiction classics like Star Wars and Firefly to spaghetti westerns of yesteryear. <laughs> okay. Um, let me make sure I can flip and show this. So this is mature content for language and violence. And their book was a Kickstarter exclusive with the extras, but it's the book itself is available uh, to be purchased from shop.woven.press. So I'll leave a link in the description of the video. I haven't had a chance to read it. Just kind of giving you the synopsis of it, but it comes with all sorts of goodie that Kickstarters does. Like this right here. That and the Ignis Quadrant. And that is from Woven Press. Now the next book I'm going to show you is by Alberto Ruiz. This is a beautiful book, but a lot of nudity. So I got to be careful what I'm going to be showing you and probably censoring some of the pictures with the Nearman Condition logo on there, including that cover. So this is a Kickstarter that was funded, including that cover. So let's look inside. So we have, this is, this is what the end paper looks like. This is what the end pages look like. And it is art on board. And Alberto Ruiz. This is what the end pages look like. And Alberto Ruiz, line and mass. And this book is dedicated to my children, Allison, Megan, Martin, Sam, Luke, and Sebastian with love. All right. Sure, we can show some of this stuff. It's a little bit of bio on the gentleman who was born in Ecuador. Preface, preface, depending on where you're from, or if you're an English master like my wife that loves to correct me. And the reason, and then broken down in the chapters, the early years. So what this is, is a Kickstarter that was funded. It's a hardcover, 416 pages of all his original artwork from the past 20 years. Again, I'm gonna just show you some of the ones I can show you. Okay, we got lucky with that one, awesome. This book will be available for purchase through the library.com. Again, I'll put a link in the description of the video where you can purchase it. And like I mentioned, Alberto Ruiz, he's a freelance artist, he was born in Ecuador, and I already have to censor a picture. But, you know, just playing it safe. This is definitely adult material, by the way. And I say adult material in the sense of nudity. There's nothing gratuitous in here. But I'm playing it safe because not everybody's household agrees with what is adult material. I understand and respect that. But nudity, I don't mean to throw it off that there's sexual content in here. It's a beautiful book, by the way. Uh, but anyway, he quit his corporate art job and publishing job to pursue his passion for drawing. That is freaking awesome. Here, let's see. We can showcase some more beautiful artwork. I love the big eyes. Gives me that anime Disney feel to it. Hey, th speaking of. And here's some breakdowns with the finished penciled piece right there. Another piece I can show. This is a beautiful book in thick matte paper is what it's printed on. And just a couple of more pictures. There's some pictures here that feel like they're printed on different paper stock for some reason. Almost like a semi-glossy paper. And I'm not sure why that decision was made. Maybe because of a little bit of color in them. And in here, there looks like there are some pictures. Like he's studying some models. Like he's drawing from life. Beautiful, beautiful art. And to see the progression. And I'm sorry I can't show everything, obviously. Um, but you really don't appreciate it until you see the beginning and where he is now. Like, this is just a small taste of what beautiful art there is in here. And then you get breakdown artwork in here, including the muscle break. I mean, he is an artist, artist. Oh my gosh. I love these behind the scenes, like, breakdowns and sketches. That is absolutely worth putting your main condition stickers on because that face is absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Wow. I'm talking about the one on the right, by the way. And then what the end paper looks like. And line and mass. Now, in here are some prints, I assume. These are stretch goals from the Kickstarter. And again, I'll share where you can buy these. So let's open this together. I'll be careful what's in here. To kind of give you an idea of what's in here as far as prints and postcards, this is what's in there. And of course, I'm 
putting a logo on top of it because, well, YouTube and regulations. Last but certainly not least is The Afterlife by John Locke, not to be confused with John Locke from Lost. Now these two oversized hardcovers here, we'll look at the first one and then we'll look at a little bit of the second one, collect all six volumes of the story and then it also includes supplemental material. So all the way in the back is where you're going to find the supplemental material. And again, here, let's go back to the title page. It's for Lucy. And all written and created by John Locke. Here's your artist right here. Ash Jackson, Nathan Ashworth, Jack Tempest, just to name a few of the artists. And the color assist by Tash Ashworth. Tash, Uncanny Omar Talk, Pretty One Day, Tash Ashworth. So this is all about a con artist named Jack Fortune. And death does not mean the end of him. It is actually another step in the corporate ladder. And then he is CEO of this newly modernized Afterlife Incorporated. And now Jack is going to balance the big business with the demands of his undead customers and the occasional threat from beyond time and space. Now, this is volume one again. It has different artwork by different artists with some gorgeous colors right here. And it's available also in trade paperback and six trade paperbacks. Let's look at volume two right here. And I believe you can, this afterlife slash incorporated.com or dash rather. Now, these oversized hardcovers, that's beautiful. Uh, he sent me the trade paperback of the first one. I think last year sometime or maybe before then and these two were kickstarter exclusives so unfortunately the only place to get the hardcovers are on ebay because they're not available anywhere else however all six of the trade paperbacks are now available on bigpunchstudios.com if you're interested in just purchasing the trade paperbacks uh, but if you're looking for these oversized hardcovers they are only available on eBay or third-party places like Amazon Marketplace. But this is what the artwork looks like. There is no ribbon, and they are sewn binding. Let's look in the back here for some extras. No extras! Woo! Dodge that bullet. Glad I didn't just talk over the fact that I was going to the back. But this is to give you an idea of what this looks like. So I remember reading the first trade. I think he sent me the first two or three and this completes the series, both of these. I love the fact that they're black and white. That's beautiful. And this is how they'll look on your shelf. The Book of Life, Volume 1, and then the Book of Death, Volume 2. And the afterlife is under new management. Get busy living or get busy dying. Ha! Ah, I love that movie. Well, it's a take on what the movie Shawshank's Redemption said. All right, but that's it. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing some of these books and you live in America... Check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was my haul for January of 2023. What was your favorite books that you bought in January? Have you already read them? What are you looking forward to reading or what are you looking forward to buying in February? And that's it for me. Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.